You want the dirt on rock and roll? You got it. Hey everybody, it's 7 o'clock hour here on a Thursday. All right, so we have Mark Torian from the Bullet Boys who will be joining us here real shortly. Yes, we do. And um, as always, please make sure you share our stream on your Facebook pages, all your favorite groups and all that good stuff. And of course, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you're not on YouTube, you can hit subscribe as well. Um, also, we're on Twitter. We are at uh, TUL Music Stream, and we're on Twitch. And as always, our podcast uh, platforms is Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and also Apple Podcasts, and so much more. We got they're all right here on the back background, background right here. Yes, yes, and we want to give a shout out to Steve Stephen Conrad who stopped by the house earlier tonight with uh, his assistant and they shot a really nice uh, story on us and what we're doing here at Tulsa Music Stream and how it started and how we're trying to build everything and we had a really great time hanging out with those guys and shooting the stuff as they say and so we're looking forward to that finished uh, piece coming out uh, by Stephen Conrad we we really appreciate his interest in the show we are looking forward to talking to Mark Torian we've had a debate well it's not really been a debate but we've heard his last name said different ways however we're going with the way he says well it. I think he pre he says it both ways as well does he really so I think if we say Torine or Torian will we're gonna win I, I want to settle the debate I'm gonna talk him into settling on one way tonight and that's gonna that's the goal is we're gonna decide how he says his last name from well, this point forward most most uh videos that i've seen him uh say his name was torian torian so. okay well we'll go with that and we await his arrival like scott said make sure if you guys have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel you got to go there and do it it yeah. is uh tulsa music stream on youtube as we told you guys uh, over the last several weeks couple months we are driving to 1000 subscriptions on youtube that'll change the game for us once we get there so go to youtube excuse me look up tulsa music stream and hit subscribe yep and that'll help us out immensely yeah and, and we have all all of our uh back uh interviews um on there um as well so you can check out all of our uh past interviews which you know i don't know where, where we're at now 89 uh this is our episode 89 so we're 11 away from 100 so it's going to be exciting once we hit that 100 mark um as well on youtube we have all of our shorts on there that we do um we do like a one minute um uh capture of, of something of one of our interviews and we'll throw it up there so and um and we also were on TikTok and uh, Instagram, so we do little TikTok videos and and, yeah. sh and do shorten up our interviews and throw some of those out there, and as well as on Instagram. So those shorts are really they're fun. You're really good at doing them. I that's where I, I Scott excels. That. No, you're you're good at that stuff, and I'm not. But um, the great thing about those shorts is it's just an easy, quick way to grab people's attention and make them aware of yeah. of the show and what we've got going on. While we await uh, Mark's arrival, and we came on a little bit early, that's because we're so excited to talk to him. What a fascinating guy. I'm telling you, man, the more you, you research these guys and find out about them, their story is always more more in depth and more interesting than, than what you might think at the surface level. And that's what's so fun about these interviews is getting to dig in about their past, how they got their start, uh, their origins, different things. I mean. I never knew until doing this research that that Mark used to be in a Motown band and they were amazing. I mean, the stuff is so good and we're, we'll definitely be talking about that. I think he's got a very versatile, versatile background um, just and, and he's so talented. Yeah. I wonder if he knows that today is Jana's birthday. Hey. Yay. And we're already getting a lot of people that are coming in Aww. here and uh, saying happy birthday in oh, the chat room. That's so sweet. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Rick, Rick Mill. That's Mel. so kind. You know what? Now's a good time to go to the fan chat screen. Yeah, absolutely. There they are. Now I can read them. Uh, thank you. That is really sweet of you, Rick, for saying that. It has definitely been a good birthday. It's been a working day, uh, working birthday, but um, I saw all the love 
on Facebook. I haven't had a chance to go through and give everyone a heart for stopping and saying thank you, but I truly do appreciate you. We do have Mark entering the room as we speak, so we're going to get him in here, get him all loaded up with video and audio. He is coming on. I see his face. There's Mark. Mark, can you hear us? Okay, he's still connecting to audio. We see his picture. Um, I think he's trying, yeah, I see him trying to check out how to connect to audio. Okay, I might type him a little message here. This is the joy of live broadcasting. It says he did not connect to audio. That's okay. We're going to, I'm going to type him a little message. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Mark? Okay. Hold on here. He sees us because he's smiling at me, but I don't hear him yet. I'm going to type him a little message and say, try to connect to your audio. Try to connect to audio. Can you hear us, buddy? Hello. Good old live. Good old live. Live he streaming. May, maybe he needs to uh, come back in. We'll give it a shot. Mark, can you hear us? Mark. Okay. That's okay. Everybody sit tight. Good things come to those who wait. He's laughing. He, he knows that he needs to be connected to audio. We're just going to patiently wait. Mark, can you hear <laughs> we he's can't hear you a, he's such a sweet guy i see him smiling but we're having trouble getting the audio connected i've got him unmuted on my side he just has to uh unmute on his side okay i think he's gonna try to come back in hang on hang Good tight zoom you gotta love zoom hang tight it you know we talked about if we had trouble and uh, that we could just have him call in so it's all good. I'm not worried. We picked our poison when we decided to go live with this thing, and this is part of the deal when we have uh, technical... All right. I think there I can there's the guy. guy. There he is. Oh, that's great. Hey, let me put awesome. you on screen. How you doing, my friend? Good. How are you doing, Jana? We are great. Thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. It's so great to see your smiling face here on Tulsa Music oh, Stream. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Man, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. We have a lot to get into. What a fascinating and amazing story you have, Mark, and, and it's going to be exciting to get into. I wanted to let you know we had your... Um, your kick-ass guitar player on here a couple weeks ago and he was telling us stories about just how what a great time he's having being in the bullet boys with you tell us real quick about what what the what these guys bring to the bring to the band you've got ira you've got brad and fred tell us what they bring to the band not just as musicians but also as your uh, cohorts and and just buddies to hang out with and do do this bullet boys thing with are you guys having a great time before I even get into that, I just want to say happy birthday to you because yeah! I know it's your birthday. You and are the want, man. And real, real quick, I just want to, I have to do this because I have to do this with all my friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jenna. Happy birthday to you. That's it, guys. I'm, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. It's over. It's over. Oh. <laughs> You just made my night. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, you're, no problem. Isn't no that worries. like? A, a, you. You, don't you have to do that a lot on like Cameo or, or the? Was it called that little? Was it Cameo? Well, people you pay know, for that. I know, I know a lot of people are on Cameo, and but I am not. I do have a Cameo site, but um, you know, I don't know. I'm a kind of like a lone wolf kind of character. Um, I'm a little gun shy with people sometimes. I know it seems a little strange, but I am a little bit. Um, uh, and I don't know, just sometimes I have a hard time dealing with stuff like that, cameo yeah. and I some of the it. different things that are, you know, I, I love being online and, and uh, of course, but just, I don't know, just sometimes it's a little weird. I, I think that I would much rather meet somebody in person sure. and have a chat with them. You well, know? that's, that's how we used to do it back in the day. And I think we do need more of that for sure. So I'm, I'm with you all the way. I, I do uh, want to get back to that, that question because I just think this, this current lineup looks like it's having such a good time together. It looks like you guys are gelling and you're kicking ass on stage and just tell us, yeah, I, I know it, uh, you know, you put it together um, and it seems like it's going well. Ira kind of told us the story about hey, how he got with you. It was, you know, done pretty quickly and you guys got gelled quickly. But what do they bring to the band as musicians and then as your friends? Well, I would say more as my friends. And um, I took a lot of heat when the original band wasn't able to continue 
And uh, I learned a lot from that. And one of the things I did learn is that um, people can say a lot of different things about you, but they can never take away your talent. Right. And something that God gave you. So one of the things that uh, that God did give me was really great intuition with people. Um, I love Brad, Ira, and Fred. You have no idea how much I care for them mm. as people and human beings. Forget even the music business and uh, music and uh, yeah, bands in general. They're just amazing. I mean, and then on top of it, you know, they're just these amazing musicians. And <laughs> the best thing about that is that I've worked with a lot of great musicians and I've been really blessed to be around some amazing musicians and um, in this crazy ass business. Mm. But when you're able to take something that just catastrophically dissolved into nothing yeah. and to bring it back um, with heart, uh, love, kindness, badassery, uh, it just it's it's a it's amazing you know for all intents and purposes the band should have been done yeah. but um i've known ira for many many years i have a lot of respect for him as a musician uh, as a person first but as a musician uh we have more talks about just life in general than than music a lot of times but sure you know he asked me he said listen you know and uh jessica uh jessica chase his uh, his wife yes yeah you know, asked me to, you know, what do you think about putting something back together, but with, you know, kind of like a mini superstar band with some great musicians. So there was a lot of musicians that came in that wanted to play. And um, I was a little bit in a weird headspace, you know, but I really trusted Ira and I don't trust that many people in this business. And mm -hmm. I really, really trusted him because his intentions were, um, were in a really, really great place as far as um, work, where he thought the band should be and where I thought the band should be too. Uh, we were in congruence in our thought pa pattern and, and the future of the band. So we were able to just take that and, and roll with it. And, yeah. you know, and then there were all these different drummers and, you know, looking at all these different bids of these amazing drummers. And um, I always had one in mind that I used to just love to watch him play at the, um, at the whiskey jams, uh, the ultimate jam sessions that uh, Jessica and uh, Chuck, Jessica Chase and Chuck Wright put on at the whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have some amazing musicians that come through there. And one of them was Fred. And uh, he was just, I don't know, I just felt this amazing, his, he has an amazing soul. And that's really important to me yeah. um, as far as his skills. But as a drummer, I just thought that he was could go from playing anything from jazz to uh, jazz fusion to thrash to rock and roll to you know latino based you know rhythms and, and what have you but he was just this great drummer so i said man if we could get freddie you know the, the band would you know just be like you have to have that a uh, foundation and he was yes. an amazing foundation yeah. um and then who i call my secret weapon would be rad brad lang uh, <laughs> i don't even want to get into talking about because he doesn't like it He's such an amazing, sweet soul. He does not like or take compliments very well. He's like, ah, he just brushes them off. You know, no, 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 no. he doesn't right. want to hear it. You know, but he's uh, definitely my, uh, the band's secret weapon. He is uh, an amazing uh, and stellar musician. His vocal ability is uncanny. Um, I, I I feel like you know, like I have this really amazing team uh, with me, and we're all we all have one goal, and it's to to be to put on amazing shows with all kinds of love and to bring shows and a performance to um, our fans and to new fans. Cause you know, there's a lot of, you know, I don't want to, I don't, as you know, uh, from maybe hearing some of my interviews before, I, I, I don't want to get into the, um, I don't like to get into mudslinging or putting down other musicians because that's, uh, right. that's not why I'm here. Right. Um, I'm here to spread love and to do what I do in my band. But that's the thing that we all have in common is that we, the show is really important to us. Um, <clears throat> we are not uh, a big finance band. Uh, we don't travel with techs or, or tour managers or um, anything like that. Yeah. Any type of guitar uh, techs or what have you. We do everything our own, very uh, punk rock style, punk and roll. And I think that people see that and they have a lot of admiration for that, um, that we're out there. And I always tell this, I, I always tell this to my fans, family and friends, we're not, 
here for us. We're there for you. Right. Yeah. So I want people to really know that that's really important these days because um, um, I think there should be more of us that are more giving and more real and more realistic in this time. So in answer yeah. to your question, uh, they've taken the band to s such a high level for me um, with what we're doing and taking the, the older songs and revamping them and uh, making them heavier, uh, bringing more uh, passion into the songs. Yeah, um, It's at a whole different level and uh, they're just amazing people. And, and <laughs> like I said, if, you know, whatever, I, I don't want to be working with anybody uh, besides uh, the four of us. Uh, we have an amazing camaraderie together uh, when we're on the road, even when things don't really go our way, we laugh it off and we make fun of it. And, you know, I, I haven't been around a group of guys that, that, you know, have that kind of heart, you know, yeah. and we're yeah. not we're, for people that think that we're out there making uh, guns and roses money and no, no disrespect to them because I love them, but that's not the case here. Sure. Uh, yeah. We're doing this for the love of our fans and for the love of our music and, and to the best of our ability to do what we can, uh, but what we have financially. Right. Now, now you, uh, you know, you guys did try to do the reunion and then COVID hit and, you know, that shut a lot of things down and, and, you know, when it did get, I guess you guys tried to put it back out there and it just didn't work out. And you said that, you know, people uh, blamed you for it and they attacked you online and everything, you know, and you wanted to end the band. Um, what made you just go, you know what, I can't, I can't take all of that negativity and, and shut my world down just because of it. I know, I know it's tough and, and there's a lot of bullying going on online and everything, but what made you just go, just forget all that noise and just Rise push, above push, it. push forward? Yeah. Uh, a lot of lone, a lot of lonely nights. Hmm. Um, the loss of a lot of true friends that I thought were my real friends. Um, alienation, being ostracized by people that I thought really loved me. Um, and sometimes, well, all the times, you know, I have, I have a lot of faith and people will say whatever, what have you about it. I'm, I'm not here to judge anybody, but I'm just saying where I, where I'm coming from my heart. Sometimes God puts you into situations and puts you by yourself so you can learn about not only yourself, but about him. Yes. And I think that a lot of the times me personally, um, I, uh, spent a lot of time chasing, uh, this dream of, of being in a rock band and successful and not really being a rock star. Um, uh, cause I, I just hate that, that word. I just detest that word. Mm -hmm. Um, but being a great musician, um, writing songs that people will sing for a lifetime. Uh, that's really important to me. So I think I'm straying away from whatever we're saying. What we're no, going to, no, but, that's um, great. That's great. But I think what, you know, being alone, um, I went through, uh, a couple of really bad things in my personal life, but I would say the thing that kept me grounded to keep on continuing was my father who passed away, um, almost like over a year and a half ago from he, COVID. Now he, did, one of the last, was he, was he at 91? Last, yes. Wow. One of the last things he told me and he would always, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how bad I miss him y'all. I mean, mm. it's just like, he was so hard on me growing up, but taught me so much and I wouldn't have ever have it any other way. But the one thing that he always told me, don't ever quit. Whatever yeah. you do, don't ever quit. It's great I don't advice. care what's going on. I don't care what they're saying about you. It doesn't matter. Don't ever quit. I want to tell you, Mark, as I we've been, him, I promised yeah. him when he was passing away, y'all, that that I wouldn't quit. And I, uh, one of the last conversations, a couple last conversations, he was telling me about different things, and uh, you know, one of the things that he admired. But my dad never really, uh, as most dads that when you grow up with hard fathers, um, they don't really shower you with admiration, but they love you uh, in, a, in, in a tough love type of way, and he never never always never told me you know how you know oh you're so talented and i'm so proud of you blah, blah, blah. but he would always just tell me in ways because he was an amazing musician in his own right you know he was a trombonist for stan kenton's orchestra i played with frank sinatra's orchestra and 
the list goes on and on and on, but uh, comes from a different school. But that's the one thing he always told me, don't quit. So I didn't, I really kind of wanted to. <laughs> sure, sure. You, you bring him up. You came from a very, very uh, musical and very versatile background. I mean, you, both of your parents were very musical. So you've always been surrounded by music, to my understanding. And, and what I kind of want to ask you about yes. is from an early age, um, you know, as you're growing and maturing and kind of developing your own talents, who were the artists and the singers back then that just made you want to sing and play and, and get to the top level of your talent? My mom and my dad. Right on. Right on. My mom was, was uh, an amazing uh, singer. Um, my mother used to put on shows to the Alley City School District, uh, would go out and sing and bring um, different amazing dancers uh, that perform Mexican uh, folklorico dancing and music. And she would go and sing different stuff from um, – jazz from jazz to contemporary for the for the kids in in uh, a lot of the high schools yeah. so i mean my mom's voice was always like wow uh, but <laughs> also my sister my eldest sister uh, her voice was just phenomenal she, she when, when she was in high school she was already getting letters from the uh from the met in new york uh to have her come and sing as a first soprano there wow. for the new york metropolitan opera so I come from a family of amazing musicians. Um, so I was very blessed that way. But as far as like other people than my family, I was really lucky to grow up with um, R&B artists. Um, I'm kind of like an R&B rock and roll guy who sings metal, and but I'm not really a metal singer, you know? Sure. I, I don't think I am, you know? But uh, uh, I'm more of a soul rock and roll singer. Uh, but uh, I would say the records I really, really listened to, and, and, and I was listening to 45s at the time, and yeah. I'm still into vinyl too, probably would be uh, the legendary and the great Stevie Wonder. Motown. Um, yes, always Motown. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, Gladys Knight, um, young Michael Jackson. Um, uh, but then you know i'm a big huge credence clearwater revival fan that was what, like if you want to really go back back you know yeah. john fogarty's voice was just you know was just amazing to me i just like it was just like so soulful and just real um marvin gay yes um oh my gosh uh sam cook my, Man, my mom just... always had barry white on and uh oh gosh you know, yeah you know, Chuck and not Chuck Berry, but um, let's see, Barry White and Al Green. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, oh, I was no. I was raised That's on all of the R&B stuff, and, you know, it's I got really me. into it as well. Yeah, definitely. But and then I, on, top of, yeah. on top of that, I'm sorry to interrupt you, just, but before I lose my thought, on top of that, you know, I'm listening to the Beatles hardcore. Yeah. Um, listening to Zeppelin, you know, like my eldest sister, she's listening to a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, what was the other thing she was just, I mean, so I, a lot of punk rock music. Um, because where I grew up, it's a very punk rock based kind of city. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I would say Alton John, hugely. Um, but then the, the other side of me, I grew up listening to a lot of jazz and Latin jazz. So um, th there's so many other artists that I've listened to also that would, that it's so weird. I grew up like in this melting pot of music. So, and yeah. so um, it, it's really hard to explain, but. Tom no. Jones is a really big. I, mean, yeah. it was really, I love Tom Jones. He was just, oh my gosh, you know, that's great. That was so cool. And of course, the the uh, the Godfather of Soul, uh, Mr. James Brown, was a huge yeah. influence on me. Of course, that's, it has to be a lot where you get your 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 growls and your your kind of your yells oh, yeah. that you have, you know. Oh, it's good stuff. And it, you know, and, and oh, I, I never you. knew how great of a guitar player you 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 are. Um, you know, oh, you're a great so front man. I love the way you dress. You you have the look, the moves, the dance moves. But Thank seeing you. you play guitar Thank and you. with your with Mo with, with your Motown band, yeah, uh, Cagney one. and the Dirty Rats, right there. Cagney and the Dirty Rats, yes, sir. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah, you had to, some moves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a blast. I I'm um, you know I still am very proud of that. I am part of the Motown family and always will be. And um, 
that was one of the greatest experiences in my music career, to be quite honest with you. You had the moves. You got like kick moves and, and you're doing all these like little fancy dances and everything. <laughs> it's an amazing song oh, because, you know, hey, you, you, you go back and you listen to some, some, a lot of musicians, older videos and they're off key or it's like a really bad audio or something's, you know, oh, out yes. of tune. You guys were in tune yes. and you had the moves down and everything was just like great. It was. Indeed. Yeah, no AT, no auto tune back in the day, you know. No. So like, back, the, you have to really sing and you have to really dance. And um, I got to give full credit to Motown, and I thank uh, the great Kerry uh, Gordy Jr. and Barry Gordy and Benny Medina for signing me when I was really, really young, and teaching me a lot of what I learned uh, and what how I perform today, um, how I dress, everything. And you know, being part of the Motown family, it's like I can't even tell you. It, it makes me very emotional because they taught me everything, re-taught me everything that I thought I already knew. Mm -hmm. um, and I came in there very like, yeah, I know what's going on. Woo! <laughs> oh, I, thought it was, I thought it was so rad, you know? And, and I was like, <laughs> boy, they schooled me so quick, man, I can't even tell you. I mean, like some of the first sessions uh, that would sit around, you know, walk me in and when you with Motown, they walk in and there's di different rooms and everybody's back in the day, everybody's writing in these little rooms, the panel's going, someone's, someone's writing, right? So it was just the work ethic and what you were talking about, those moves and different things, we rehearsed six days a week from 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Whew. We took a lunch break and that was it. Wow. That's Jeez. the type of how would you say work ethic that I learned in the Motown way. And I still approach it today in the same way, mm. especially in the studio. Um, I, it's gotta be right. It's gotta yeah. be the show uh, live. It's gotta be right. We gotta, there's gotta be a show. Um, there's gotta be, you know, I don't know. There's, I, I've never been a person to sit and look at my watch and my boots on stage. Yeah, I guarantee you that work ethic is why you've had a career as long as you've had. And we certainly, certainly give you props for that. I'm going to shift well, gears you. on you a little bit because you got to understand sure. the people here in Oklahoma are super excited for what's going oh. down a week from tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about this. We're going to put up this Rocklahoma flyer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you guys are playing uh, the Thursday night uh, pre-party and you've yes. got your, your set is at 8.05 now. I don't know, Mark. I don't think you've ever done a pre-party, but I want to tell you something. The pre-parties are off the hook because everyone is full of energy and they are ready to go. And you guys are going to have an amazing time. Talk a little bit about Rocklahoma. I know you've done it before. You guys were there in 07. Ah, uh, yes, 07. That was, that was a magical year. What, what are Give us some thoughts and memories about Rocklahoma. Oh, my gosh. Um, before the memories, I just want to tell everybody, we are going to come and destroy Yes. Rock Rock. yes 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 and bring a party like y'all haven't seen from socal in a long time Hell yeah. i gotta tell all y'all this right now i love you so much and i am so excited to come back there i was in the original rock Lahoma is one of the artists that i was very blessed to be but this is a big thing for me and the band we're gonna go and blow the roof off this place i hope everybody brings their drinking stomachs and their dancing <laughs> shoes because it's going to be on. Yeah. Let's get this party started for I, real. I promise you it's going to be on. Yeah. That You gave me goosebumps because, I mean, it's coming up. It's a week. Everybody oh. waits all year long for this thing to go down, and here we are a week away. It's going to be great. Oh, my you know, gosh. I, I met you at Rocklahoma yeah, 07, and you just got off stage. And you were walking, you had your white pants on, and then you, you were carrying your guitar. Ah! And, uh, and you, had, you had your uh, bandana. And I, I said, hey, Mark. It's like, um, back in, uh, I think it was 97 or 94 or 95 or something like that, we opened up for, uh, for you, with you guys in Wichita, Kansas at a place called Rock Island. And uh, you had this big mic stand with a tire on it and you would bounce yes. it up and down and i thought it was the coolest <laughs> mic stand ever and i was like where's your where's your tire uh you had it last time i saw you had a, a, a oh that's a, right i do remember that and, and you yeah. turned around and he said well now i have this big guitar <laughs> replaced it you replaced the big tire with the big guitar yeah right no, on. That was, that was i thought that was the most coolest comeback oh my gosh i dude i wish i had that that mic stand still 
that thing, you know, myself and um, Lonnie's, um, Lonnie Vincent's little brother, uh, may he rest in peace, we came up with this idea of making this this tire, like the mic stand bottom and the whole thing. We thought it was so rad. Uh, <laughs> and it was, but we'd have to bolt it in and, and the piping was like motorcycle piping. So, <laughs> this thing would always get loose, break, and then we couldn't, we couldn't weld it because it was <laughs> aluminum. Oh right. my gosh. I think one day he just got it and threw it in the trash. <laughs> That's great. Oh my god! But no, I'm sorry. That 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 was a story. But yeah, no, man. Listen, um, what the original band? I I didn't play guitar, and it it would really irk me that I wasn't allowed to play guitar mm. uh, because we supposedly wanted to be this four piece band. And I understand yeah. that. That's all good, and I get it. But if we would have played a little brought my guitar playing in too, I think it would have changed the, 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 the guy, the dichotomy of the group. And I think it would have been for the better, uh, but, or who knows, it might've been for the worse, but now I'm playing guitar and I've been playing guitar for many, many years. Um, I played and start and started some amazing and been in some amazing bands before Bullet Boys playing guitar. So, um, yeah, a lot of times people don't really know that about me that I, uh, can sling the ax and, uh, do a little chicken picking too. You certainly can. And I, you know, I'm hoping tonight we get into some stuff that you don't get to talk about very much, but we're inevitably, we're going to hit some stuff that you have probably told repeatedly, but I always like to assume that maybe some people watching have never heard this story. You had to Jenna, really anything for your birthday, honey. Don't <laughs> think about it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I hope <laughs> this is Stop good. It's your birthday. <laughs> How, on, how long? Get, how long you got, Mark? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's get Girl, into this. <laughs> let's get into this about your your close calls back in the day. It's Woo. another it's another testimony to your resilience and your your you know father instilling in you to never give up. Tell oh. the people who haven't heard I get the story. Him sometimes I'm going, why? Why? I'm uh, like, I want to give know. up. Ah. I no, know, I'm but I'm glad we're we're all glad you didn't. <laughs> Talk about the thing with Ozzy, man. Tell tell the story about how you were going to be Ozzy Osbourne's guitar player, but it didn't quite pan out. Tell us that story. I got a call at eight o'clock in the morning from Greg Jeffria from Angel, who was my mentor, who basically kind of brought me into this crazy business when I was very very young. Um, and I was living with my mother still, my mother and father. And I, uh, my mom actually woke me up and she goes, it's Greg on the phone. She goes, he woke me up. Right? I was like, oh shit. So I get the phone. Literally, she's not like, really pissed. So I get on the phone, what's going on? Hey, get your ass over here. Get your ass to my house, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. He goes, I don't care. Bring your guitar and come up to my house. He goes, you got that little amp too? I was like, yeah. He goes, bring everything. I can't tell you why, just come up to my house. <clears throat> so literally got up, got ready, jumped in my ride, drove up to Greg's house. And right before I walk in, he opens up the screen door and he closes the door behind me and he goes, hey, listen, Ozzy and Sharon are here and you're going to audition for Ozzy's band and he wow. really wants to see you today. I said, you're kidding me. I go, so, okay, cool. So I walk in and there or not, there's Ozzy and Sharon. Wow. And uh, I know it sounds really trippy, but, you know, and he, he goes, nice to meet you. Oh, my, my God, you know, blah, 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 blah. Can you play something for me? Do you know any of my songs? And I said, Yes, of course I know your songs. So I uh, started playing Over the Mountain, and he was just like freaking out, like mm. just like going losing it. And Sharon was like, She was like, Oh my God, like, you know, so I was playing, and you know, and um, do you know any other ones? So I think I played Suicide Solution or something. And then, wow. Um, and then I, what, what was the other? I think I can't remember the one I, I played, uh, the other one. Oh, what's the other one? Gosh darn. Never Say Die. Wow. Okay, because oh, wow. I love that song. Yeah. Okay. So he goes, hold on, stop. And I stop. He goes, all the best of them were great, mate. I detest that song. Oh. said, okay. I go, I'm sorry. No, don't, don't ever be sorry. I just don't like that song. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's like, what you <laughs> so it's like okay, sure. It's like like the music, like give me the thumbs up, and he goes, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we started chatting for a little bit, and then um, it was just a, it was just really great. He he was so sweet and so kind, and Sharon was so be so beautiful and sweet. And he says, how would you like to you know 
play guitar with you know for my band I, i'm looking for somebody and you know your guitar skills are incredible and greg was right and he goes you know what band are you playing and what are you doing so i just tell him and i was doing a little bit so that's kind of like how it started how i met him mm. and from then we we went um i went from there to pick up some equipment so he bought me some guitars uh du charvel and i had a really great relationship with charvel and um back in the day with grover jackson and i told grover that i you know that i was going to be playing with Ozzy, and he just freaked, freaked out. He's oh my god, blah, blah, blah. so wow. I, he goes, "When are you going to come down?" So we went down there, and we picked, I picked up a couple of guitars, and Ozzy went with me. It was uh, really just, it's just like a dream, you know. And when I think about it, still, it's just kind of like maybe it never happened, but it did happen. When <laughs> right. Was, you know? <laughs> but I rehearsed with the band for about, I would say, about 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 a month at SIR, and uh, I thought I was thrown down pretty well. Um, Rudy Sarso was also in the band. And, and uh, Tommy Aldridge, um, and uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, Rudy was just such a sweetheart and yes. very kind to me. And uh, because he he would tell me though, like I don't think we're like really ready. We're all still, uh, you know, suffering through Randy's death, Mark. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad that you're here. But you know, I was so young, man. So he, it would, they were still had that and i remember ozzy sitting in front of me right like right in front of me when i'm playing uh rehearsals and it's a little nerve-wracking you know sure when you know the great and powerful oz is staring right at you and yeah. all eyes are on you but eventually i i thought i had I, you know i thought i did well i thought i was seen in band we're gonna go blah, blah blah we were supposed to go out to england start a tour in europe and and this is the truth this is a true story i'm not embellishing it on it anyways so i remember getting ready and i was at of course, my parents' house, and I had all my stuff, and they were supposed to pick me up in the morning, so I was all ready. I had my bags back. The morning passes, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. No ride, no nothing, no phone call, nothing. Uh, went into the next day. I still had my stuff, ready to go. Nothing there, no phone call, nothing. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, well, what the hell's going on? I, I mean, you know, I, I got a little worried. I go, maybe something happened with them or what have you. So on the third day, we get a call, and it was Sharon, and she wanted to talk to my mom, and she eventually talked to me, but I had my mother had me the phone. She said, listen, darling, we love you, but we're we're going to go with another guitar player out mm. here. Uh, we just feel like you're too young. You're, you're, incredible talent, ta you're incredibly talented, and we love you, but, but it, we just need somebody that, you know, Ozzy still feels like you're too young, and it kind of reminds him of his relationship with Brandy and because and it's just this weird thing like but I could understand it yeah and so they ended up picking up a guitarist by the name of Bernie Torme yeah sure. and uh, Bernie Torme did the, the tour and then I think there's a lot of other people that came in and auditioned and some whoever else got the gig but that's basically the story so heartbreaking yeah, man how, and, and how, I would yeah, be ahead. so crushed yeah, and, that's and, what I was gonna say you know doing I was, doing research on you I heard multiple uh, interviews where you tell this story and each one is just as heartbreaking as the next and it just keeps getting worse and worse oh, and, it was and, and, brutal i mean i did i i trip out still you know like it it, it but you know y'all it 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 drove me to become what i did with the bullet boys right yeah. uh i don't think if those things ever happened to me i don't I, and it, it, they were crushing they were just crushing defeats, and I, I'm a big sports guy, so I don't I don't like to lose. I don't think anybody does. No. But straight after that, one of my very dear friends, um, who I just idolized, came and put me in his band, and that was Stephen Piercy from Rap. Love Stephen. Yeah. So, so right after, I mean, I was literally like the LA Times is the big thing, paper newspaper you know, newspaper, and I was like front page of the whole time. Local kid does good, and Aussie, the whole trip. <laughs> Steve, wow. Steven heard about me. He did you guys. He did. They did you guys. They did you wrong, bro. He goes, you know. But I, I want you to. I never forget this conversation. He, and he brought me into the band. I was at the Troubadour, and we were, had a long chat about it. I want you to come and be a rat. And mm -hmm. I was like, you want me to play a rat? He's like, yes. And I was like, oh my god, yes. Mm -hmm. So he just took me under his wing, Stephen, and brought me in the band. I bet you have so a I lot of memories of uh, Robin Crosby, you know, one of the greats. Oh, my God. He was my, he was my best brother. He was just like a, a 
totally a brother from another. He took me under his wing and, you know, he was like, kind of like my bodyguard, you know, cause I was yeah. so young. Those guys were a lot older than I was. And, uh, it was just like, it was so devastating after losing the Aussie thing. And then I'm going right into this thing. And then, you know, you got all these seasoned, amazing musicians and lots and Bobby and, and Juan Crucier. And, and at that time, I really learned so much from Steven though. He worked so hard. I have so much love for him because I was there when there was nobody there. There was no big hits, no nothing. And he would just drive around. He would drive around in a, he, he probably won't dig me saying this, but he might, I don't know. I, I love him. He loves you too. We used to drive around in this green 210 Dotson, and we would go around and, and put up flyers on telephone poles for rat. And he would do that all the time. He was always working for Rat constantly. And one thing that I loved about Steven, I don't know if he ever remembers this, but you know those old flip calendars that you put up and they were like dog calendars or whatever? Sure. Yeah. But he'd, he'd always have one of those and always for the months. And I always noticed that the very last day of the month, it would always say, it would always say, Rat will be signed on this day. Oh, wow. So he was manifesting before anybody even knew what the word manifestation was. So I learned from him, and I think he's one of the greats. He's, he has more hits than I can possibly think about. Every song, I, I go to see him and get up and sing with him all the time. You know, I, I love him so much. And uh, every song, you're just sitting there and go, there's another hit, there's another hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, right? So <laughs> I was very lucky um, to be, you know, I'll, I'll always be a rat, you know. I'll always be in that family because, and Robin was, um, me and Robin wrote a couple of really great songs um, and I think a couple of them are actually going to be on the new rap release. Oh, that's uh, great. Stephen told me so. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the, one of the songs, uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be released, but uh, you think you're tough. Uh, yeah. Off I EP. Wrote, yeah, with Steven, uh, myself and Robin. And I remember the day that I wrote it because uh, Robin called me up and he was staying in North Hollywood with his, with his beautiful girlfriend at the time. He goes, he goes, hey, Torian. I go, what's going on? He goes, 10 o'clock in the morning, come to my house. I'm making pancakes. <laughs> yes. And I went, fuck yeah. Because Bob and you would have cooked, dude. It was like really good. So I went down there, over the door, and he's got his whole chip. Ah, dude, what's going on? He goes, bro, remember that riff that you were playing me the other night? That one thing goes, we're gonna, after, I'm going to show you, but I'm, let's eat pancakes first. So he makes me breakfast, the whole thing. And we sit down in the living room. He goes, play that riff you were playing me the other night. So I start playing that. He goes, okay, stop. So he goes, the other one. But still one of Steve ones. What, you know? And he goes, okay. So he, gets, he puts it all together and he starts playing me. He goes, I, I stood up and he, he plays me the thing. And I was like, oh shit, this sounds great. So we, we started working on it, brought it to Steven, and Steven loved it. Mm. And Steven, of course, brilliant with lyrics, just came up with everything right away. And then the other one was called, uh, I think the other one was Reach for the Sky, but it's a, a different song entitled it, and, and it totally. But I think that's going to be also on there. And we used to play that live when I was in the band. Mm. You know, you have a big influence on Eddie Van Halen, Van Halen. And we want to get to some of these questions here in the chat room. There's oh, so yes. many people in here asking yes, so many questions yes. and saying so many cool chat. Oh, okay. So I want to get to that, but I, I do want to I ask it. you if you've I seen the, uh, the Monsters of Halen. Rock, uh, Van Halen, uh, when they just released the, uh, the video of their set at um, Monsters of Rock in 84. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. What do you think that of that? That was insane. I Man. thought it was like I had no idea how shabbily the, the thing was put together. And I don't mean that in <laughs> – Right, right, right. I don't mean that in, like in a, really, in, a, in a really bad way. I'm just like – Wow, this looks like so punk rock. It was so rad. Yeah. Like people, there's a hundred thousand people out there easily. And it's all this like, just kind of like whatever. And, you know, it was, it was so rad. It was random. At, totally. And you're looking <laughs> at Ned like, I knew Ru Rudy Learon really, really well, who was uh, Eddie's uh, old guitar tech. And I do the whole thing. I see Rudy just running around and Ed's calling him over and pointing and stuff. And he's looking at him like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I go, oh my gosh, this is so rad. Because I was able to, back in the day day, uh, be around some of that craziness. So it was, 
it's just great to see just the um just how amazing they were man yeah four yeah. guys making that much racket are you kidding me <laughs> yeah it was crazy here's I here's what anybody has to say man no one's ever touched those fools no and Never. here's david flipping over Sorry. michael and it was it was pretty badass the only thing i lamented about that video was that there there was no audio on the backstage portions of it yeah i so much wanted to know what they were all saying to each other but you, you couldn't tell but it you was, know what uh, that, if, if, if that would to be happening knowing that uh, being knowing that family mm -hmm. probably wouldn't make it to the next gig. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you know it, huh? we got to see two ways. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you right. saw this? You're never going to see that again. Right. right. <laughs> well, let's talk real quick. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. If you need to, yeah. to go, just let us know. Otherwise, we're going to keep you for a little bit longer here. Oh, you know what? Let's do the viewer Janet, comments. It's your birthday, honey. I'm here, darling. Oh, I'm you're the best. You're the best. Thank you, Scott. You want to do some viewer comments real quick? Or? Sure, sure. All right. Uh, do yeah, you, sure. Do you have this pulled up? I'll get them pulled up. We've got a little screen here. Uh, here's Sean Lane saying shout out from OKC. Is it true that Smooth Up In You is really lay it down, sped up? Wow. Um, that's not true. That's false. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what I was thinking, but I still wanted to ask yeah, it. That, that's false. Okay. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's, I don't mean to say it so mean, but no, that's not true. Sorry. No, I, I totally hear you. Jack Stovall says, I've also been a huge Bullet Boys fan for many years. No guys, you, no doubt you guys will kill it at Rocklahoma. Clint Schweitzer says, Mark is the man. Hey, your guitar player's in here. Ira Black, he says. I love I, Ira Black. He says, I vegan chicken pick. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Ira Negra. G Gamma Mike Smith says, why isn't Hang On St. Christopher not on current set playlist? Oh. Did you hear that, Ira? Let's let's put let's make it so for this uh, beautiful gentleman. <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. No, no. You know what? That is a good question. We we've been actually we've been talking about putting that one in the set, but right now we're like really digging our set right now and but we got a lot of things that we're gonna be changing also. But I will We'll definitely uh, keep that on our list. So thank you for sure. Melissa Mompower says, we're so excited for you guys. Thank you for all the years of wonderful music. May you be blessed. Uh, Bob. Oh, thank you so much for throwing me blessings. I love that. Yes. I, I hope that you're blessed too. That's the sweetest thing. Thank you so much for being there for me and us for these. And being there for me, I know I'm the sole survivor of this thing, but I love you all so hard. You have no idea. I Please believe me. Bob Soares says, one of the best front guys ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's good God, stuff. So See, dude, Stop you're, it. you're Stop getting the it. love. This is juicing him up for next Thursday. I like it. Oh, I like my it. gosh. I, I'm just going to go out there and stand and blow everybody kisses and throw flowers to people. I swear to God. We it's going to be wait. so rad. Kendra Bostic says, can't wait to see you at Rocklahoma on capital Woo! letters. Right on. Let's so, go. I can't wait. To yes. You, know, you were talking about competition and sports. And one thing that you did say, because I'm a big Bulls fan, and I'm sure you're a Lakers fan, but Huge Lakers fan. Phil Jackson, you know, Zen Master, yeah. Tim Templeton, uh, your producer for your first three albums, Ted Templeton. Yeah, you you kind of said that he was your Phil Jackson. And what do you mean by that? No question. He gave me knowledge with things that I would probably not have figured out on my own. Uh, he was a big reader. Uh, he was a big um, theater, uh, movies, presentation, thought, language, just being, he was just brilliant. And he taught me a lot of things, books to read, uh, things to study uh, that I wouldn't have if I, if I would have never met or worked with, with, uh, with Teddy. Mm. Oh, tell he me a little bit. Yes, yeah, sorry. He go ahead. A aspect to most uh, uh, were other producers that I I, I have worked with uh, that they just weren't like that. They uh, uh, Ted, for all intents and purposes, and I hate using that that word that that phrase, but he was Uncle Ted. He was like our our fifth bullet boy. You know, like we all wanted we all wanted Ted to be our producer of this record. We. We had other producers that came in that wanted to produce us, but we were stuck on Ted. And when that came through, it was just 
that was it. Whatever he said, it was like, it was just gold to me and gold to us. And I still feel the same way. It's the, how, the best. How, how close was it that Gene Simmons was going to be the guy? Oh, super close. Wow. Like r- ridiculously close. And it, it just didn't go down that way. Um, because Ted came in and right away. Well, first, first it was, um, uh, Ted's sister who is Rob- Roberta Peterson. Uh, she's the one that initially came to see us first in our rehearsal room. And then Ted came in after and we didn't, she, we didn't know that she was Ted Templeman's sister. Oh, wow. So when she came in, she, we had no idea. She just says, I'm going to bring my brother to come and see. You. And we're like her brother. Okay, that's cool. You know, we we're like, all right. You know, she was so sweet and kind and gorgeous and beautiful. And we were just like, oh my gosh, she's like this angel that came walking in the room. Right. <laughs> And um, so we're thinking her brother. And then so our illustrious manager, Mr. David Kaplan, tells us that, well, her brother's Ted Templeman, and he's coming in tomorrow to see you guys. So we're like, oh, sh-. I mean, like it was just like panic city. We didn't know what the hell to do. <laughs> so thank goodness, you know, he came in and he was just so rad and just like just so easy to be around and didn't have this big, you know, like attitude. And, you know, he was just down really down to earth and he said listen i love you guys i want you to play me all your material and when i'm tired when i've heard enough i'm going to raise my hand but when i raise my hand please stop just stop don't play at all just stop wherever you're at it's like mm-hmm. okay so i think what i can remember uh we we played a lot of songs uh at least 10 11 12 songs and and he's sitting there on a notepad writing everything down and like laughing and and two, you know, whatever. And then like, he kind of throws his hand up and we all stop, you know, and he goes, come here sit down for a second. He goes, I love your songs. I love the other stuff that you're playing me too. This is just great. And he goes, and he, and he just said it right there. Would you, would you guys want to do it? He goes, would you like to do a record together? Wow. Would you like to do a record with me? And we were just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yes. Right. He's like started laughing. He goes, "Oh, you guys are ter- you guys are hilarious." <laughs> so that's one of the things that he really liked with us was that you know we found humor in so many different things. We were just constantly laughing and cracking jokes and just that's good. you know we we all came from that whole thing of just you know we worked very very hard and diligently and uh, especially rehearsing and in, uh, in the old days in the piss room. I mean, we mm. were so broke, man. I mean. <laughs> I can't even. T- I, I can't even tell you. We're so doing it just by the skin of our teeth. Uh, I remember a great story that uh, Lonnie was staying at his. Uh, we would rehearse at his first. We when we first started the band, we rehearsed at Lonnie's in Lonnie's mother's garage in Carson. That's where the band first started was in Carson. So there was this little liquor store on the corner of of his street that he lived on, and in the back of the liquor store. They made up like burritos and tacos and stuff, but they weren't supposed to really do that, but they did it anyway. <laughs> so me and, Lonnie, me and Lonnie would just be like, oh, dude, man, do you have enough? What, what do you got? He goes, dude, I got a couple bucks. I go, dude, I got like five bucks, but dude, we got to put gas in the rabbit, dude. And she goes, I know. Dude, listen, we got this, dude. We got to go to this person's house and that person's house and we'll be good, dude. It'll be straight. I said, okay. So we'd end up going. He goes, but dude, we got to go pick up a burrito, bro. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't eaten today and i was like oh shit okay <laughs> so that was a big thing is getting like food man you know yeah, and yeah. gas to do what we had to go do but me and lonnie worked very very hard um uh even you know before that um there's a lot of people that we would always try to get into the big parties you guys you know all the time you know people would just be like oh shit there comes lonnie and mark hey you guys can't come in man sorry dude like, why, dude? Dude, just you can't come in here, bro. Mm. Ain't going to happen. That would happen to us everywhere. I'm like, oh, fuck. And Lonnie would get so pissed off. Fuck those motherfuckers. You know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> One of these days, those bitches are going to be dying to come in. And with, he goes, you know, he would sit there and, you know, sitting outside in the street. Just, you know, we were just real, just street for sure. real, real. Sure, sure. That probably came out, out, of the, out of the box, like, you know, bullet coming out of a gun. We had a lot to prove. Because a lot of people, I felt, um, didn't believe in us. You know, yeah. they didn't believe in our talent. And they thought me and Lonnie were just, you know, it was never going to happen. Mm. Um, and then Mick, you know, he came in from um, 
from being in King Cobra and you know he had a chip in his, on his shoulder kind of like me and Lonnie and because he had a bad taste of being in that band a lot of bad things happened to him in that band and then mm-hmm. you know I mean, Jimmy was just very very young and mm-hmm. uh, but he was very very fortunate because at the time um, we were checking out all, all kinds of drummers and uh, my sister uh, Nicole who was actually went to school with Jimmy's brother <clears throat> was a big champion for jimmy like you gotta put jimmy in the band man he's a jimmy, you gotta, i don't know and molly didn't know it long he's like ah mick was like i don't know the guy's meters like all over the place well it's like no 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 this this guy's you know the guy blah, blah, blah. so uh, i think we had a bunch of people that came in and, and then finally you know uh, i think lonnie gave the, gave the green light and mick was like cool with it so lonnie came in and worked with jimmy like for months months mm-hmm. and months and months because he had played with carmine so it, it took a long time, but you know, Jimmy yeah. was at a punk rock base and he, he was full of piss and vinegar too and young and yeah. you know, he had a lot to prove. So he came in and, and did his thing. But uh, if, it, if it wasn't for my sister um, or, you know, Lonnie that took the time, I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he would have been in the band because we, sure. we wanted a couple other drummers that we had uh, in mind and they were going to be the guys. Sure. Wow. You know, it, it's, it's so interesting. Like, when you think about that time, that era, we had so many rock stars, you know, there was movie stars and, and yes. you just don't have that today. You have more, no. like you said in a, in a previous interview, you said there's, there's more political stars than, than yeah. we have rock stars or, or Hollywood stars. Why is that? And do you think we'll ever get back to rock stars like we had before? When I think of rock stars, I think of the brilliant David Bowie, the amazing Freddie Mercury. Um, I think of guys, uh, uh, Mick Jagger, Iggy Pop. Uh, what we have now is a different type of rock star. I, I don't know what that is, but the school that I come from is a rock star is more giving to his fans in the community than than themselves kind of i don't know i don't know if that makes any sense to anybody i know it sounds really strange but i think as a musician and it's you know uh, i think we just really need to like just be that yeah. uh be da- be dangerous you know it's okay to be dangerous sure. i think a lot of people um after this horrible pandemic and being locked down um i think people became very comfortable I don't, I, I don't, I know I'm all over the place. I'm so sorry. You're fine. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make a point of it all, but it's all I good. think that, um, we, I think musicians have lost that and it, uh, we become a little, maybe a little lazy, you know, yeah. maybe just a little, yeah. uh, I don't know any other way how to do it. I go out there full force, sweat from head to toe, uh, put it, everything out there. Um, people go, I don't know how you can still talk after singing like that. And, you know, but I, really take care of myself you know I, I for an old guy i'm out here running three to four days out of the week I'm, you know i run two two miles two two and a half miles you know every four days out of the week i'm i i'm very uh careful about what i eat and you know so i can stick around and i can still sing like i sing and everything sure. else and i think that's what being a true star is uh i see a lot of you know what's really strange to me, and I and I don't. Want, I'm not saying this. Please, I'm not saying this. Um, I'm I'm saying this more out of concern of anything. I'm uh, with obesity in some musicians. Um, I don't understand that. Yeah, I struggle with it. I'll tell you that. I, it's it's a battle. I mean, some people they they put in the work and it just falls right off of them. I just for feel whatever. so much empathy for it, Jana. You it, know, I just. It sucks. I, I have a, it, it really does. And I think that there's a lot of us that have let ourselves go in this pandemic. And, you know, I yeah. have to jump up on the horse, too, and say, listen, I've been a year and a half off of all fast food. I gave up fast food. Good for you. Um, I started, and it was so difficult, you guys. I'm like, oh, I have a jack-in-the-box that's like a stone's throw away from me. Like, <laughs> okay, it's time for tacos. You know, shit, oh, no. <laughs> What Jimmy Chongas? No, and it's like, dude, I'm not eating that stuff. I just can't. I'm not right. doing that. So I, I've lost weight, but I feel so much better. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I'm not perfect, whatever, but I, I've tried to do that. And, and I, I really try to help people with uh, different things in diet and what, what to eat and not, not to eat. They always ask me, God, you look so great. How do you, how do you do it? I said, you know, I, I don't drink. Thank God. I've, I've been uh, almost 28 years sober. Congratulations. Uh, so that's great. Uh, it's, it's very, a lot of calories in alcohol, a lot of calories in alcohol, yeah. but, um, oh, thank you. It's a, I'm sorry, I don't want to sit here and toot my own horn, but I'm just like, I really try really hard to, you know, stay healthy. I, I, I look at guys like Rick Springfield, who's out there 73 years old and yeah. looks like just a brick shit out. Like, wow. No kidding. Look at that dude. He's rad. Yeah. You know, I look at guys like Mick Jagger and go, okay, that's what I'm looking. That's, you know, that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just, they have they have respect for their fans and that's a rock star you know like come out and look rad you know for sure yeah no absolutely you know you have so many great stories and we can sit here and talk about all of your amazing stories how you 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 first uh saw um Alice in Chains your your conversations with Axl Rose you know you got a, a Metallica oh. James Hetfield story have you ever oh. thought about putting putting together like an autobiography oh, yeah. a book with all of your amazing stories in it yeah I, you know I I would love to, but I think sometimes, I don't know, it just feels like I like to just call keep it up in my head, you know? Right on. I, it's like really personal to me, and people are so mean, and, and you know, these days, like, they'll be like, oh, F that dude. Why would I want to read that autobiography? But it's right. like, you know, the stuff that I, I do know and that I've been a part of would be a great read. I do know that. Everybody always asks me that. They go, what do you think? I go, oh, I don't know. There's so much good stuff but there's some really dark stuff too. <laughs> yeah but the, you know that's yeah, why these interviews are so special you know? man it's because we're we're kind of getting to climb inside your brain for an hour and hear some of it and you know one thing i wanted to ask you i told you we'd cover stuff that you've probably covered multiple times what's some stuff that you never really get asked about that you just love to talk about and take a couple minutes just you know, talk about something you're passionate about that very few people ever ask you about. Maybe his dog. Ooh, I am passionate about this guy right oh, here. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> That's Love Mulligan. It. Mulligan. He doesn't like cameras though. He does oh. not like to be like I, I try to, even when I try to take photos of him and stuff. I yeah. have to catch him like that. There he is. <laughs> he doesn't even know. No, yeah. That I'm about. What? I'm passionate. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I'm really passionate about? What? I wish people would be. I'm passionate about empathy. Yeah. I'm passionate about finding in ourselves as human being, beings more empathy. People don't know what everybody's really going on with, you know, inside here. You know, we've had a lot of that after this pandemic. Right. And I think. If we could be a bit softer with each other and less hard, uh, I know that we're all dealing with a lot of stuff. And please, I always tell this to people. Let's be less political. Yeah. My politics are fucking rock and roll. There you go. That's it. There you go. Don't bring up politics with me. Don't. I'm here on this planet to bring love and light. I'm not here to talk about all this other nonsense. It is what it is. Right. But I think if we can really find ourselves, be more empathetic. Uh, decent, kind, um, adhering to people's uh, mental health issues, um, I think would be really a big thing uh, for all of us. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Life goes by so quick and we're all so busy, 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 busy. But, and the th I think the third or fourth thing I would say is to really love on the guys that are here right now, the guys that have, have put their hearts out in rock and roll from our genre, we don't have Janie Lane around and anymore, who was right. a beautiful soul. Yes. Yeah. He gave everything in his heart to all of his fans and his family. He had issues I, like we all do. <clears throat> but there's guys that we're losing right now. And, you know, there's so many. My, uh, shout out to my friend Joe Leste, who just had a stroke. Yeah, from, yeah. Uh, mm. Bang Tango. I mean, Bang Tango. you have to start looking a lot. I mean, I wish the fans would be more adhering to loving on us than making fun or, you know, or I don't know what it is. It just seems kind of weird sometimes to me. Um, yeah, I, I, know I, that agree. I agree. As much as <clears throat> we've given up 
our younger lives and people think, oh, they're so badass and they're rock stars. And here's the other thing. We're all getting a bit older too. Yep. And it would be nice just to do, enjoy the time that we have right now and to love on the guys that are out there that are really working really hard. Yeah. You know, I see the guys from Skids, Skid Row working really hard. Uh, I'm, I'm Kip Winger, who yeah. I love dearly, who is a champion for the Bullet Boys. Uh, I just a shout out of love to Kip. He works so hard and is such a beautiful and amazing artist. Um, the, the cats from Warren, we just got finished playing with them. They're amazing. Always put a great show on, work really hard. Their whole crew. Um, shout out to my brothers in Tesla that we've been playing with. Yeah. Uh, those guys just put on a phenomenal show. Yes. We had so much fun with them, and I love them so dearly. Uh, they work really hard. So, I mean, just if you go out there and really watch, you know, people are, we're not fully open, open, open yet. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Yes. We're not, it's not there yet. Right. So that we're all doing the best that we can by bringing rock and roll and punk and roll to everybody with, you know, with love and passion and everything else. And just know that, you know, to really be rad to your guys that have been around for a long time. Amen. Really love them, you guys. No, so I know you advice. you had a, a released a single not too long ago called Holy Fuck. Yes. And uh, with <laughs> Ira Black. Um, yes. You know, recorded that. I love Ira Black. Now, do you. Shout out to Ira Black. Yay! Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you. Uh, do you guys are going to put out any more new music or are you guys just oh, basically yes, going to do like singles kind of like do it kind of like that? Or are you going to ever put out another full album? Cause your last album, uh, I believe you did that. What in uh Dave Grohl's studio or something um, from out of the skies. Yes, from out of the skies. Yeah. Shout out D to Dave Grohl. Thank you for letting us in the studio to cut that. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh yes. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. It's, I think someone was jamming. That. I think my sister was jamming that today. It sounds so rad. Yes, with my brother, uh, Mr. Jesse Hughes from the wonderful band called Eagles of Death Metal. Yes, yeah. indeed. I, I got to get but a show. Yes, we are, getting ready yeah. to put out, we are getting ready to put out a single so I can talk about it on your show. Cool. We are working on it right now. It's almost finished. And I can't wait for everybody to hear this. Me and Ira and uh, Brad and, and Fred have been really working diligently on this one. Uh, Ira's at the helms, of course, as the engineer. Nice. And we're just finishing it up. But we're working on hopefully releasing a double album in January of next year. Oh, yes. wow. That's so great. That's double it's... album. Wow. That's big news. Dude. Yes. Do you have a title yes. for the single that you might be releasing? Well, we might have a – I'm giving the title of the record – well, I'd love to give the title of the album the double album right now. But we've been throwing around a lot of, um, a lot of titles, but there's one that I really like. And uh, kind of sums up the Bullet Boys. Uh, I want to call the album "Jesus Fireworks and Porn." <laughs> I was not going to guess that one. Jesus Fireworks and Porn. <laughs> is it porn? I well, thought maybe one was going to be why. called. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> on the road, I think every musician can can agree with me. When you're traveling on the highways of our beautiful country, there's a lot of billboards that you see. One of them is Jesus, a lot of churches, right? Big giant billboards. The other one is fireworks, fireworks. stores. Everywhere. <laughs> this right. is pull off here, you'll get the best fireworks, right? <laughs> right. And then the other one is adult bookstores. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's <laughs> everywhere in our country. I'm just like, wait a minute. And I promise you, so, all three of those are just, within a square mile of each other here in Oklahoma. As you drive, I promise. Yes. I've, I've seen it next yes. next to a next yes. to a, um, a a pot pot store, marijuana. Oh store. yeah, 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 for sure. Oh yeah. sure, yes. And then the, the you know the liquor store right next door. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, real quick, I got to jump that's in what, and. That's, I got that's it. what I'm saying. What I love about this country, I think the title would be, it's, it's so USA, everybody would get it. <laughs> it is. If I don't do this, I'm going to get my hand slapped. There is a guy in here who has been begging us to tell you hello for the last half hour. He goes by the name Gilligan. And he said you would know who he is, but he said to tell Mark hello from Gilligan. So hello from Gilligan, Mark. Gilligan, what's up, my brother? How are you? I yeah. hope that you're doing well, buddy. I haven't heard, heard that name in a minute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, tell him, send some love to him. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. We'll do that. And and I hate to ask you to roach your voice. 
Uh, but we do have a request in here that you give us a smooth up in you. Do you have one in you tonight or do you want to save it for next week? I think I'll save it for just make it a little bit more special for next week, if that's all right with y'all. There you go. Yeah. You don't want to blow your voice out. Yeah. We can't be responsible for that, for that. Ah, oh, no. You know, everybody always asks me, and, uh, you know, a lot of people will come up to me and uh, it's so, it's, you know, what's really, what, what I really love is, and I'm very, very fortunate and blessed for this. I mean, I could be at Smart and Final. I could be at Walmart. I could be whatever. People come up to me every day. And one of the things they'll come up and they'll go, they'll say it really soft. They go, smooth. <laughs> like I turn around and it's like so. So they go, is it is it you? And I'll be like, I don't know. Is is it me? I don't know who I am today. And they start laughing. That's freaking hilarious. I got but, I I got to make a confession to you as well. We'll start wrapping it up. I'm I've been sitting here dying in my chair for the last hour as I'm looking at the screen and we're talking to you and I'm realizing that I have misspelled your first name on the screen and I want to apologize for that it says M-A-R-K and it should say M-A-R-Q oh my gosh yes, so I, I, listen I'm going to take Shame the lumps on you, girl. no I know that because I know how it's spelled because I've been we've been promoting it with the Q here's 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 my confession to you i work this really stressful day job <laughs> as well as doing this what, i came honey, in here and, oh it's called abb it's yeah what is we, it? I, what, i'm in purchasing type? i'm in purchasing and i i uh i buy electronic circuit board assemblies really interesting okay, stuff all, let's get your boss on the phone and let me chat with him just for a minute can you make an arrangement end. Okay. Oh, okay. absolutely. You're kidding me. I, I know some. I know some people in the higher ups, girl. Okay. I just want you to say this girl was so sleep deprived that she spelled my name with a K instead of a Q. So, oh, everybody watching, okay. everybody watching, and Mark, I am terribly sorry for the mistake. No, you're, don't even, not even stressed. No worries. That's some bullshit absolutely. right there, and I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> we we certainly can't wait for you to be at Rocklahoma prior, you were here in 07, you came in 08, and right. here we are in 2023, and you're gonna be bringing the fire and your big ass guitar oh. with you. <laughs> and Fire and brimstone, for real. That's and right. A beach, and a lot of beach balls. Yep, and we have a double right. album, and, and your Motown voice and everything, I just love on the Zaza album, the the song "Mine," you, you have that that Motown feel to it on that song. Mm, it, I love it's that song. perfect. Thank you. It's a great song. I, I listen to it almost every day at work. I love it, man. It's on my playlist on my Spotify, and uh, it, it's an amazing oh, song. You. And you got a great I, voice, and and you have oh, so much you. talent. Your dance moves oh, are great. Your thank spin you so moves much. are great. I love the way you dress. You're an ultimate front man. Thank and you so you're a much. badass guitar player. So, I mean, you got the full the full thing, man. And on top to of that, yeah, go ahead. I try to I try to keep the star in the rock. That's what I try to do. You're doing it. You've got you've got, <laughs> like he said, you're the full package and I just put a key on your name. So, we're we're ending Ooh, this on a yeah. high note. Damn, I'm so yeah. embarrassed. That is just that is a rookie mistake right there. I'm sorry about you that. You know what? Before we leave though, I just have to tell everybody out there. If you're ready for an album or a couple albums, they're gonna make you just go like, I feel like it's summertime, that you wanna go out there and maybe love on somebody that you never loved on. Maybe you wanna go up to a mountain and you say mountain, you're gonna fall and the mountain falls, then this is the album that you're gonna be wanting to hear from this next summer is the Bullet Boys new double album. Oh, my God. We're gonna be bringing it where it's uplifting. There's not gonna be any political weirdness on it. Right this on. is gonna be old school. That's going to be fun and that you're going to want to go and uh, do very, very naughty things, too. Oh, my gosh. Now, what made you decide to do a double album? Just you got so much material? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I love it. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. I mean, that's what Ira said. He goes, he, you know, he approached me with it. He goes, we have enough for a triple album. I said, what? He goes, we're doing a double album. And he just turned around and said, I go, we're doing a double album? He goes, yeah. I said, okay. Love it's, it. What's great is I think we always challenge ourselves. You know, yeah. uh, I was just incredible. It, it's he's a great, he writes great music, uh, and we're, there's always this challenging thing of, you know, finding the right uh, craziness. Mm -hmm. You know, like holy, like holy fuck. You know, he had this riff, and I go, oh, that riff's dope. Let me come in. I got some lyrics for it. Came out. We released it really quick. It sounded amazing. Put a great mix to it. He, you know, did some directorial. Um, 
uh, did directing on on the video and, and had a whole storyline with it. He's just you know great, and we work really well together. And I I just cannot wait for you guys to listen to this. We're gonna actually put out a single here, I think next month, from what I understand. We're just trying to get the right video for it. Um, it's gonna be more of an anima animation video uh, from us, uh, but we're working on that. But we're I don't know if we're gonna actually put the song that we're releasing on the album. Mm. The song is just incredible, and <laughs> I just I. I I can't let the cat out of the bag because when you guys hear it, you're just going to be like, oh, oh, maybe, you know what, maybe what I'll do is, um, maybe I'll have Jessica send you the rough of it, you guys. Yes. And you there can you listen. go. Yes. Okay. Man, what that a sounds honor. great. What a blessing. Everybody's, Thank you. Everybody's loved it so far and it's a really great song. Uh, uh, it was, um, it was, I can't, I, if I talk about it anymore, I'm just going to give it away. So, yeah. Wow. Don't get yourself in trouble. When I was doing no, some re dude. when I was doing some research on Bullet Boys, um, I seen you, I saw you guys on you know of course on on MTV in your hosting Headbangers Ball and all that. You guys looked like you were having so much fun. You had a lot of oh, lot of young yeah. energy. But at the end of it, a little thing popped up and it said Bullet Boys information PO Box thirty five oh ninety in L A California nine zero zero three five. Do you still have that PO Box? <laughs> no, that was uh, that was our manager's office, I believe. A PO oh box. wow! Okay. So yeah, cool. Probably, probably not. Probably not anymore. Do you still do you still call yourselves Bullet Pigs? Uh, I always call everybody the Bullet Pig. Yeah, I always tell them the pigs are here. Let's do this. Um, <laughs> that's so great. That, was, that that name was given to us by uh, the amazing Mr. Tom Kiefer when we were on tour with him many many years ago. Really, that's fantastic. Yeah. He came into our bus one day and it was just a wreck like it was, always was. He goes, fuck bullet boys. He goes, you can call you guys the bullet pigs. What the hell's going on? <laughs> That's so awesome. And that was it. We were the bullet pigs. Everybody's like, yeah, we were all stoked about it. Man. We, were so the bullet, we were so the bullet pigs that we had a huge, gigantic uh, uh, backdrop of a huge, giant pig in a suit riding a contract out. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious that's so awesome <laughs> well, there he goes, you guys took it too far man it's, it's, uh, i mean come on man enough no we're just and that's what we're going to do this time we're just going to take it a little bit too far man well, we're going to watch for that and, double album. hey listen you, thank you for giving me announcement to coming up really really soon everybody really and that's i'm talking about uk and europe very Ooh. very soon Dude. I cannot wait to announce this, and our band Bullet Boys cannot wait to announce it. It's we got some big announcements coming up. Okay, so, we're going to be watching. So. Listen, I want to thank you for giving me an amazing birthday. Thank you for being gracious Aww. to me about misspelling your name. I'm terribly oh, sorry. And, I knew better. Go. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, but listen, hey, yeah, go ahead. I just want to thank you for having me, and and uh, I was I hope I was able to answer the questions that you wanted answered. You and, did. And, uh, and thank you for inviting me. I, I, I have issues sometimes with doing, uh, I don't know. I, 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 like I said before, I'd much rather talk in person and chat. And I stuff understand. And but well, I, I do want to thank you so much for having me. It means a lot to me. And I want to thank my manager, Jessica Chase, yes. uh, for hooking us up and, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to send that, that track to you guys. That awesome. would be wonderful. We'll see you next Thursday night at Rock, Oklahoma. Yes. We Woo! can't, can't wait, buddy. Take care. Thank you. And have a great night. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next time. Thank you. God bless y'all. Take, Take care. Awesome. God bless you. Rock on. Thanks, man. Bye bye. Yes. Oh my gosh. And and that's his his house. I believe that he moved into not not too long ago. Yeah. And he's no longer in the city, but he it overlooks the city to where he can um you know look through and see. He's just away from all of the nonsense. In so the, he in the is big still city. in California. He's in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. He's out there. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Pacific. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But he's not in the big city anymore, but he can, he's now a little bit for a lot further away yeah. and where he has his own space and he doesn't have to deal with all the nonsense out there anymore. Right. You know, when you get older, you just, you just don't want to deal with all that. The craziness. nonsense becomes harder and harder to deal with. Get off my lawn, as the guy says, right? Good catch on the queue. I didn't even. <laughs> yeah, good catch now that we're, uh, now that the interview's over. Oh my God. Hey, seriously, I knew better. Did someone correct you in the chat room? No, oh. I, I, I started looking at it and I just said, oh my God. And, and then I didn't think to, I, I didn't change it yep. till the end. 
Dang, man. Rookie mistake. So bad. Hey, he's a great guy, regardless of how you spell his name. Thank you, Jessica Chase, for hooking us up with such a sweet guy. He's a good guy. I, I think it feel I think he not only feels like like it's how do I say this? I think he feels a calling to be a positive light in a dark world. And I don't know what issues people have had with him in the past, but to me, he's just a beautiful soul that's out there spreading goodness. And I think we need a whole lot more of that. And man, I couldn't have uh, agreed more when he said, let's have more empathy because we really don't know what people are going through. Everybody's going through something. Everybody deals with stress and pressure and heartbreak in different ways. Yeah. Just be sensitive and kind to the people mm-hmm. around and you. And especially think about all the decisions makings you have to do, you know, with, with, with a band, you know, if you're a band leader and you're, and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you have touring and pro issues, you got to, you know, you got family, you got, you know, recording and record and, and releases and singles and, and decisions and decisions. And yeah, a manager can make a lot of decisions, but at the same time, you know, he's got to be comfortable with a lot of those decisions, you know, personally, you yeah. know, and yeah. it, it's, it's a, it's a tough, tough deal. And then the older you get the the more, you know, freedom with your decisions you want to have, because yeah. I mean, you're on borrowed, not borrowed time, but you know what I'm saying? You're like, you, yeah. you're not as free as, as when you were in your twenties. You know? <laughs> but any of these guys who have sustained their career uh, as long as a guy like Mark has, they're doing something right. I mean, you just, you can't do this for a career this long and, you know, just be whiffing, whiffing on the, on the ball every time. I mean, he's doing something right. And we appreciate another fantastic interview with another fantastic human being. Mm. Thank you, Mark Torian. We really enjoyed that. Let's uh, give a shout out real quick to our sponsors, Psychomo Filmworks, who did our, our new intro. If you guys need a little video shot for your band, your business, anything, he's your guy. He can put together a really cool professional looking video for you. Email psychomo at gmail.com if you need a video done. We already mentioned Rocklahoma. It is upon us. A week from tonight, the party starts. You guys, make sure you go to the DEB concert stage at the Roadhouse. You're going to see Bullet Boys. You're going to see a whole lot more all weekend long. And not just his stage, but the other stages as well. There's your lineup. It's going to be fantastic. You guys get out there. Have a great time. When you come back, report back to us how it was. We know it's going to be great. I'm hoping we can go out there at least a couple days. Okie PC, Dustin Little, thank you for your your support of Tulsa Music Stream. We appreciate you so much. If you guys have any uh, computer repair needs, IT issues, contact Dustin Little at Okie PC, 918-640-0892 or email Dustin at OkiePC.com. Greg Shipman, do you guys need some pictures shot uh, of your senior? Do you have a senior student uh, that uh, needs those really nice looking senior portraits done? These guys not only do band photos or, or uh, podcast photos, they, they do great senior portraits as well. If you need some professional looking photos, contact shipmentphotos.com. Todd Cook at Identity Merch. You guys need some band shirts printed up for your band, your business. He's your screen printing, screen printing guy. Go to Identity Merch, con, contact Todd Cook out there. You can also pick up some Tulsa Music Stream t-shirts if you go to our Facebook page and click on the link in the top left that looks like our website link and it'll take you to this store where you can pick up some of these threads. Scott already mentioned earlier, watch us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to Tulsa Music Stream on YouTube. Catch us live or on replay on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I guess it's now called X, but we're going to call it Twitter because we prefer the Bluebird. X. X is goofy. And we're also on Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and so many others. Um, just if you can, just go ahead and uh, on your morning drives to work, you know, hook us up. For sure. Let's talk about what's coming up. Yes, we got Carlos Gavazzo. Man. He's a quiet, ex Quiet Right guitar player. He was on the mega metal health album, Bang Your Head, all that good shit, Condition Critical. <laughs> Oh my God. He is like, I love Carlos, man. Yeah, this and, is going to be great. This... That will be Tuesday, September 5th. He's now in King Cobra and we cannot wait. His wife is great. Uh, she sent us some new, some shirts that we're going to be wearing yeah. September 5th. Uh, they have an amazing, uh, uh, t-shirt and jewelry uh, store where they sell a lot of merchandise and things like that. Uh, bang your head. 
awesome. Check him out. Just go to uh, Carlos Gavazzo. You'll see it. Um, also, you know, don't forget about our TikTok and our Instagram and our our, our, our shorts that we we put out on our YouTube. And make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel. I really appreciate that. I want to tell you about one more upcoming episode. This date is fluid, guys. We She told us we should have a solid date, hopefully by the end of this week. But we do have Tim Ripper Owens on the hook for a return visit to Tulsa Music Stream. It's just going to be a fluid date. We think it's going to be later in September. So we're keeping that event out there where we've moved the date to later in September. That is not a solid date yet, but he will be back on with us and he's a great guest. You guys remember his first appearance on here. Fun guy, super entertaining. So stick around because we are just uh, keeping the party train moving, trying to book as many of these awesome artists we can. And uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I want to thank you guys. I saw some people sent some stars earlier. That stuff really makes a difference and helps. You know, we, uh, we have to go out and buy new cords new sometimes we have to replace cameras or lights they burn out stuff you don't even see but when you send us the stars or you send a donation to our cash app tulsa music stream we take that money and we put it back into the stream because we really want to grow this thing and make it more professional all the time yeah so thank you for your support and the same goes for our youtube channel um you can send us a super chat you can send us um super thanks and um i believe they're super super picks or super I forget what they, what it's called. Anyway, we got a, uh, some super stuff that you can send out, super. and that will help us. That was help uh, help us out as well. It will. And we we actually have some people that are were in the chat room on our YouTube channel, and we appreciate you, uh, Sean Lane, uh, Chris Mizuno, and uh, thank you guys for uh, hanging out. Kevin Smith, oh, Tulsa yeah. Music Extreme, Smooth Up in Ya on YouTube. Thank you guys so much, man. We're uh, trying to build this thing, and. Um, just the the bigger it gets, the better, more rock stars we'll have on our show, and and the more we'll be able to stream. So we are looking forward to uh, the future for this show, yep. and and just hope it just keeps building. But it, you know what? It all starts with you guys. It's it does. you guys that helps us. So we really appreciate it. We try to we go live on Twitter, we go live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Which we don't really know much about Twitch, to be honest with you, but. We will also upload everything onto all, all of our podcast uh, uh, platforms as well. So we do appreciate it, and thank you guys so much. I also want to say thank you to everyone who's gotten in here and wished me happy birthday. This was such a great way to spend spend a birthday. I mean, dang, you, you know, 30 years ago, if you would have said, yeah, when you turn 49, you're going to interview Mark Torrey, and, and I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Great way to spend a birthday. It was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate happy you. Happy birthday. And, You're a good one, and I appreciate uh, your love and support, and it's been a a great day, and we'll have some more uh, 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 great birthday dinner with Mom tomorrow, and then uh, Rocket Science is at River Spirit this Saturday night. Come on out and see us rock and roll. This Saturday, River Spirit. absolutely. Five o'clock somewhere bar. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We will see you on Tuesday, September 5th, when we talk to Carlos Cavazzo. Don't miss that one. Have a great night. Thanks for watching Tulsa Music Stream. We'll see you soon.